Hi there. I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use Logger Pro to perform some video analysis of projectile motion. So the first thing you're going to do is open Logger Pro. If you haven't done that already, please do. And when you do, you're going to go to File Open. And you'll see the Open dialog. You're going to come down here to Sample Movies. Open that folder and go to Basketball Shot and open Basketball Shot. And what you'll see is something that looks like this. I'm sorry this is a little small, but um, we can resize a lot of these, these windows here. So you're going to get this, um, this canned video of a guy shooting a basketball. And we're going to use this to perform some uh, analysis on the motion, the projectile motion of the basketball. So here's the, the video frame here. <clears throat> and you've got these tools on the side and these uh, VCR buttons or DVD buttons on the bottom here. So this is play and we can play the video and there goes the ball. And we can stop it, play, stop. This is the rewind all the way to the start button, play, stop, go back. And these buttons just step one frame at a time. So you can click on these individually, and there goes the ball. You can make it go backwards, etc. So what we want to do, first of all, is capture the ball when it's actually a projectile. And that's when it's out of the dude's hand here. So it looks like this frame, he's just still barely touching it. So we don't want that, because he's applying a force to the ball, and then it's not projectile yet. <clears throat> okay, now it's in the air, so we know only gravity is acting upon it, so it's definitely a projectile. So let's take this, grab this handle, and I'm going to pop this open a little more. It's easier to see. Um, so we're ready to go, and what we can do is click on this button here, and that's going to be add a point. And when you do that, you're going to get a cursor. You can put the cursor right on the ball and click. Now you can decide you can use the bottom of the ball, the top of the ball, the left of the ball, whatever, right of the ball, it doesn't matter. As long as you're consistent, it's going to be fine. But don't once you make up your mind, don't change it. So I'm just going to try and go for the middle of the ball. There's a point there. And notice the frame gets advanced by one automatically when I click. So here we go. There's another one. And I'm just going to go through this. <clears throat> and if you're off a little bit, it's OK, because we're going to have a lot of data here. And statistically, these little variations that um, that happen just because of the you know the mouse is not exactly the right pixel uh, they're going to get averaged out hopefully if my error is truly random so as you see I'm following the ball here I'm just going to go through this click each time balls picking up some speed vertically and okay, that's enough for now. And you can see over here when I when I click on a point, I get a uh, on the image, I get a point in the table and on the graph. Now these are in pixels, which have no frame of reference really. So what we need to do is tell the software you know, how much a pixel is, and we're going to do that by um, using the scale down here. The um, the people who took the video were thoughtful enough to put a couple meter sticks on the floor so we can actually convert pixel units over to actual meters now so we do that by clicking on this little ruler right here and we click on the front of this first part of the ruler right there and drag all the way over to the other one and then we tell this that this is two meters in length and boom we've done that now if we look at our graph this is now in meters because we have scaled it to some real world units. Okay, we can also add, um, this is adding an origin. We can, we can do that. The origin can be arbitrary, but whatever, we can set it right there. It's not that important. Uh, and that's about it. So we can look at this. Let's take a look uh, over here. I'm going to expand this graph now. And we have both X and Y position. You can see the X position. It's a line. The Y position in blue is looks parabolic and we can click over here on the axes and choose oh, we can get the x velocity what should that look like well here's what it looks like well that looks nasty but look at the scale we only go from 2.8 to 3.4 so this is really this is really just if i squish this down and squish this up this way we can see if we put the scale to something more realistic it's kind of flat it just varies a little bit because of my clicking inaccuracy. So there's the um, x velocity. Let's try the y velocity. What's that going to look like? 
there you go. So and we can go on here. We can um, fit a, a line on this. Get that over there. So there's a line on that. Uh, I can't read that slope, but I believe it says 9.7, negative 9.7, which should sound vaguely familiar. Now if I go back and look at this uh, Y position, I can fit a curve on this, and this should be a quadratic. I'm going to try that fit. And I can see that first coefficient there is about negative 4.96 or so. And that should be half gravity. So there we go. That's uh, generally how you do a video analysis of projectile motion using Logger Pro. Okay, good luck.